Falco is a pretty good character in Brawl. While he does struggle with recovering, killing and being alive fast forward, making him susceptible to chain grabs and early KOs, he more than makes up for it by being able to keep his opponents out with lasers. And even if his opponent does get it, he can just down throw them into potentially massive damage. Or he can use his side beat to get out of there and start shooting again. As well as those extremely strong tools, Falco has a whole bunch of other really good moves. But he does have one move in particular that is not good at all. And that move is his forward air. Falco is a bird who prefers the air and his worst move by far is an aerial. Ironic. Brawl was the first Smash game to give Falco his spinning beak fair, and it had a rough start to say the least. The move is a multi-hitting move which has 5 hits and deals 11% total. This is perfectly fine on paper. Nothing groundbreaking, but nothing terrible either. This is assuming you get all the hits in the first place, but... We get there when we get there! The final hit also has a decent amount of knockback at low percent, so that's alright. The move comes out in frame 6, which is decently fast for a forward aerial. I mean, it is Falco's second slowest aerial behind up air, but frame 6 is still very respectable. In addition to this, the move also has a long hitbox duration, with the hitboxes being active for 30 frames. This is actually long enough to be our air dodges, which Falco's other aerials cannot do, so that's nice. The last not awful thing about the move I have to say is that while the move's range isn't good, it does have more horizontal range than Falco's other aerials overall, even if it's only a tiny bit more than bear, which is a far superior move overall by the way. The final hit is also freakishly big, so that's neat, but that's all the positives I have to say about this move. This move is garbage, and as someone who plays Falco in this game, I feel that it is my obligation to explain as to why that is. Let's start off by talking about the amount of lag this move has. In the air, the move has 59 total frames, which is pretty bad. This move takes an entire second to finish and Falco is a fast faller with a slow up B. So if you use this off stage at the wrong time, you're probably gonna die. This naturally makes the move risky to use off stage or even on stage, as your opponent has plenty of time to potentially punish you or even kill you. While that isn't very good, it's only the beginning. When you land with forward air, it has 33 frames of landing lag. 33 frames! That's more landing lag than any other forward aerial in the entire Smash series. With the exception of Samus's fair in 64. But that's in a game where you can press Z to remove most of an aerial's landing lag. Falco can't do that here. This insane landing lag naturally makes the move terrible on shield. The multi-hits are minus 32 on shield. Assuming you land the frame after hitting the opponent. This gives your opponent over half a second to punish you if you land. And if you thought that was bad, the final hit is even worse on shield at minus 38 at best, allowing for even bigger punishments. And what makes this even worse is that unlike in later games, this move does not have a landing hitbox. Yes. This move has over half a second of landing lag, and it doesn't have a landing hitbox. This sucks because if your opponent drops their shield when you land, they won't run the risk of getting hit. The move also has a pretty bad auto cancel window, which means that if you do a short hop forward air, you are getting the full 33 frames of landing lag once you land. There's not really much else I can say about this, so let's move on. Now it's time to talk about what happens when you actually land the move. I haven't talked about the moldy hits yet and there is a reason for that. They are awful. To give the moldy hits a tiny bit of credit, they use an auto link angle and they have a low hit lag and SDI multiplier, which makes it difficult for the opponent to intentionally escape them, although it is still SDIable. This sounds good until you realise that the multi hits are so dysfunctional that the opponent is going to fall out of them regardless. There are two major issues with the multi-hits. The first issue is that there is an A-frame gap between each hit, which is really really long. This is bad for multiple reasons. First of all, it allows the opponent to easily fall out before the next hit comes out, and this happens a lot. Against grounded opponents, for example, if you sure hop fair, it will literally never work against the majority of the cast. They will just fall out and you'll be left open for a huge punish. Even against aerial opponents, they are highly prone to just falling out the move. Second of all, the huge gap between hits results in Falco being minus 6 between each hit on shield. This means that frame 7 or faster options can beat these multi-hits on shield, including grabs. While it is very common for multi-hits to lose to certain out-of-shield options, particularly Dolphin Slash and Whirling Torture, it is not common for them to lose to gosh darn grabs. To put into perspective how bad this is, let's see what happens when Pikachu grabs Falco. A few moments later. In all fairness, if you land the move shortly before the final hit comes out, the gap between the multi-hit and the final hit is smaller, potentially only a single frame long. You have to land the move pretty late for that to happen, however, and by that time, the opponent would have already reacted to you doing fair. The second issue with the multi-hits is the amount of knockback they deal. When the opponent is at 0%, do you want to know how many frames of hits done the opponent has?
one. That's right. One singular, lonely, insignificant frame. That's seven frames less than the gap between one multi-hit to the next. The move is the same on hit at 0% as it is on shield. This means that if Falco lands one hit, the opponent can easily avoid the next hit. If they are on the ground, they can just shield the move or hit Falco out of it. Or even grab him if Falco is falling. If they are in the air, they have enough time to dodge and or air dodge through it. And if that's not good enough, they can potentially hit Falco out of it. Additionally, if you trade with Fair, you can even potentially hit Falco twice. Even if you don't avoid the next hit or even the hit after that, you can still avoid the move or hit Falco out of it afterwards. Let's not forget that this move has a lot of ending lag. A lot of landing lag and a bad auto cancel. So no matter what you use to get out, Falco is vulnerable to a pretty substantial punish. But do the multi-hits knockback scale? Well, yes. But barely. The problem is that the knockback scales quite slowly. The opponent can still air dodge out the move until somewhere from 56 to 75%, depending on their weight. And even when they can't air dodge, some characters still have other ways to avoid the move, whether that's trading with an aerial or using an intangible special move. On the ground, the move can be shielded for a pretty long time. It isn't the worst when Falco is rising, as the opponent will be put into the air. But when Falco is falling, it's really bad. The move does not lead into itself until the opponent reaches somewhere from 95 to 150%, depending on their weight. Meaning that if the opponent is not lifted off the ground from the multi hits, the opponent can shield them when they are well above 100%. Brilliant. Brilliant. Even when the move has enough hits on to actually lead into itself, there are still numerous scenarios where the opponent will just fall out. Like the short up fair example I mentioned earlier. This is a multi-hitting move that not only doesn't work, but Falco can literally just die for landing it because of how laggy it is. Ivysaur's back air might deal a pitiful amount of damage, but at the very least that move works a decent amount of the time. Falco's fair not only often deals a whopping 2%, but it is also punishable by death on hit. And there's one more thing I want to mention. If you hit a crouching opponent, the move actually becomes two frames worse on hit due to the opponent receiving less hit lag. In fact, at 0%, the opponent goes from having one frame of hit stun to essentially having a negative amount of hit stun. <laughs> ah! This naturally means that the move links even less reliably and the opponent has even more time to punish. This is actually one of the extremely rare scenarios where crouch casting can actually be optimal in Brawl. Which is both interesting but also kind of sad. Especially considering just how awful this move is. There's also the fact that most characters can just crouch under a short affair, so that's fun. I've been going on and on about how terrible the multi-hits are, but I haven't really talked about the final hit. So what about the final hit? Is it good? First and foremost, let's talk about its knockback. The move does have good knockback at lower percents, which at least makes it safe when it lands. You also can't STI the final hit, so that's nice. The problem is that the knockback does not scale much at all. Let's see what happens when you hit Jigglypuff with this move at 300%. Wait, wrong clip! It didn't even kill Puff at 300% at the ledge. Even Ivysaur's bear kills way earlier than this. The move also sends the opponent at a kind of high angle, which certainly does not help with its KO power and edge guarding potential. Another thing which sucks about the final hit is that it has a lot of hit lag. This means two things. One. It makes it really easy to DI. And considering that this move doesn't even kill with no DI, that's no good. You pretty much fly vertically when you DI this move properly. Second of all, this makes it so awful on shield, which I discussed earlier. 33 frames of landing lag, yet this hit is minus 38 on shield. Wonderful. So the move not only doesn't work properly, but if you do manage to miraculously land the final hit, it doesn't kill and it is ultra unsafe if it does not hit. I don't know how this man managed to do it, but he did. And it's baffling. So, forward air is a multi-hit where the multi-hits are minus one hit, allowing you to air dodge out of them or hit Falco out of them. You can fall out of them without even trying, and the final hit is pathetically weak. Not only that, but Falco also has neutral aerial, which is a much faster, safer, and more rewarding multi-hitting aerial, being better than forward air in almost every way. So does forward air have any uses? I guess? I mentioned this before, but forward aerial's long-lasting hitboxes allow the move to beat out air dodges. If the opponent air dodges around the same time the hitboxes come out. Something Falco's other aerials cannot do. The move won't deal a lot of damage and it certainly won't kill, but at the very least, you can hit the opponent and put them in a less favourable spot. Unfortunately, if the opponent air dodges out the move after being hit, the hitboxes do not last long enough to punish that. 
You might think that you can use the final hit on its own as an edge guarding option, but just don't. The final hit is easily telegraphed and the move launches the opponent at a high angle, especially when DI properly, which is easy to do. Even if you stage spike the opponent, they can just wall tech the move and avoid potentially dying. There is one more potential use that I can think of, but it is incredibly niche and specific. If Marth or Wolf specifically have Arceo lag and they are close to landing, Falco can drag them down to the ground with fair and get guaranteed follow-ups, including a guaranteed up smash for a KO confirm at high enough percent. This is incredibly niche. Not only because it requires the opponent to have a glitch they can easily avoid if they're careful, but the up smash confirm in particular pretty much requires frame perfect timing and perfect positioning on a super unsafe move, but it does exist. Falco does have jab and nair as far better R2 setups against Wolf, but these setups aren't guaranteed against Marth, making the fair setup theoretically useful against Marth. As incredibly specific and difficult it is to land, Amazing. This totally saves the move from being terrible. Overall, Falco's forward air is shockingly bad. It is a horribly unreliable unsafe multi which also has an incredibly unrewarding final hit if you somehow manage to land it. Falco almost always has infinitely better options, and forward air is such a terrible option that you will pretty much never want to use it. With all that being said, this is the worst error in the entire game. The move is so unreliable and so unbelievably laggy that using it can be a death sentence, especially against characters who can heavily abuse Falco's fastfaller status. There are some other bad multi-hitting aerials, but none of them are as detrimental to use as Falco's fair. Thanks for watching. Guys.